saw it in your old number. It's going to be a new fast starter of my talk where it's going to be leading this study or discussion group. And uh, you're invited to be a part of that. That's the Institute of Christian Citizenship Class 630. And I hope that you'll be here. Now, if you have your Bibles, I want to direct your attention, please, to Matthew chapter 28. You know, we uh, always preach a lot of sermons, teach a lot of lessons, and think a lot about the preceding up to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All the events in the life of Christ, all the way to the time of his resurrection. But there's never too much said after Easter. We don't talk about what happened after that. There are so many things that took place after Christ came forth from the tomb. And so this morning, I want us to think on this subject that Jesus Christ was first seen by the women. And for a few Sunday mornings, not many, but a few Sunday mornings, we're going to look at some of the events that took place after Christ came forth from the dead. Now, the Bible records at least 11 different bodily appearances of Jesus Christ right before his ascension. He appeared to the following, and I want to give these to you. Some of you may jot them down, some of you may not. But first of all, to Mary Magdalene in Mark chapter 16, verse 9. And then Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, Matthew 28, those are the verses we're going to look at in just a moment, verses 9 and 10. Peter in Luke chapter 24, 24. And then he appeared to two men on the Emmaus Road in Luke chapter 24, verse 13. He appeared to the disciples when Thomas was not present in the 20th chapter of John, beginning in verse 19. And then he appeared again when Thomas was present in the same chapter, beginning in verse 26. He appeared to the seven disciples who were fishing in the 21st chapter of John. He appeared to the 11 disciples in Galilee in Matthew 28, verse 16. He appeared to the 500 in 1 Corinthians 15, 7. He appeared to James, his brother, who was also the author of the book of James in 1 Corinthians 15, 7. And he appears again to the 11 disciples on the Mount of Olives in Acts chapter 1. Now, Mark 16, verse 9 tells us that Jesus appeared first Mary Magdalene. Let's listen to Matthew's account of that in verses 9 and 10, Matthew 28. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid, go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. And you know, Mary Magdalene must have run ahead of these women as they were coming to the tomb. They, were, they had a duty to perform. They were going to put more spices on the body of Jesus. Now, as she comes, and as she does, they, there are four things that she experiences that nobody else has ever experienced. First of all, she was the first person to see the risen Christ. She was the first person to speak to the risen Christ. She was the first person to hear the risen Christ speak. And she was the first person the risen Christ commissioned. For he told her, go and tell, go and tell. And that's what she did. I believe the world would have arranged it something like this. If they had been in charge after, after the resurrection of Christ, they would have said he's going to appear before the elite. He's going to appear before the big shots of the city. He's going to appear before... All of these folks before anyone else sees it. That's not the way the scriptures reveal it to us. This crowd was not devoted to Jesus Christ. The elite, the religious leaders, all of those people, they had no devo devotion whatsoever for Christ, and they got left out. Now, folks, listen, you don't have to be a celebrity to receive spiritual privileges. Just be devoted to Jesus Christ. Just love Him and know Him in your heart. So let's look at something. First of all, he appears to these women. Mary Magdalene is a part of the group. Now when she comes up and she sees that you know, the big stone has been rolled away and she appears before the opening of 
that tomb, she looks in, and it's empty. No one's there. And she turns to go, and she's going to tell Peter and John. Now these other women came onto the tomb, and then several things begin to happen. Verse 9, the first part of that, they meet Jesus. They were on their way to tell his disciples. They were on their way to do a job. To these women were in a place of service when they met the Lord Jesus Christ. They were doing something. They were blessed. Now, if you this morning, if your life is short of blessings and you're wondering what's taking place, what's going on, my life is not being blessed as I would like for it to be blessed, could it be because you have failed to do your duty? Could it be because you have failed to serve the Lord as you have ought to have served Him? Could it be that God has spoken to your heart and He's given you something to do and you have neglected to do what He's asked you to do? It could very well be then you're not being blessed. Because God has said, here's what I want you to do. And you're saying, no Lord, that's not on my agenda. That's not on my calendar. I'm not going to do it. Well, not only did they need it, but they hear Jesus speak. Jesus says, all hell. That was a normal greeting for that time. That was a common expression. Now, in that day, it meant something like we Southerners do down south, out of That's what it meant, out of I kind of like that, don't you? That's what he said there, out of All hell. Now, they come to the tomb thinking Jesus is dead. We're going to put spices on his body. We're going to do what we're supposed to do there. They had seen him die. They had seen him on the cross. They had seen him as they plunged the spear into his side. They had witnessed all of that. They had watched as they placed his body in that tomb. He's dead. They were not thinking right. You see, they were doctrinally wrong, but they were devotionally right. It may be this morning that many of your doctrines may not be as accurate as they should be, but your affection for the Lord Jesus Christ is real. And it could very well be that he might just speak to your heart and he might just say to you this morning, Howdy. Howdy. Then they worship Jesus. You see, they see him, they hear him, and then in the third part of verse 9, they, there are two things that they demonstrated when all of this happens. It says first that they fell at his feet. They worshiped him. The love just was flowing out of their lives as they are worshiping the Lord. They were humble. Humble, showing heartfelt love for Jesus Christ. Uh, these women did not lack for a true affection for their Redeemer. They had been redeemed. Their lives had been changed. And, and you know, today so, so many people have left their first love. They've left the love that they had for Christ when they were first saved. Mm, has that happened in your life? You've sort of drifted away from that first love that you experienced with the Lord. Well, these ladies and not their love had not diminished. It had not turned cold. It had not turned formal. And Christ did not rebuke them for clinging to him because they were revealing their love to him. That's not why he told them, don't do it. Now, secondly, look at their loyalty. The loyalty that they expressed. Worshiping him. I don't ever read that Christ ever refused the worship of him. He was God. Now, when, the, when your love and your loyalty to Jesus Christ is as it should be, you will worship him. You will worship him. Now, there are a lot of folks today who claim to be Christians. There are a lot of folks today who claim to be members of churches, and they stay away from church. Why? I think down deep they are just revealing their lack of love. I mean, how can you stay away from that person that you love? How can you stay away from his church? How can you stay away from his bride? How can you stay away? <coughs> Show your love. Show your love like these ladies did. Now there's something else that did in verse 10. They obey Jesus. Jesus tells them, here's something I want you to do. Don't be afraid, first of all. Don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. Now here, go and tell my brothers that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me. You go and tell them that I want to meet them in Galilee. 
Here's the place. They were on their way to tell the disciples of the resurrection as the angel had told them to do. And so he's telling them to do. Now this commission of Christ was a repeat of what the angels had said. Do you remember the account of how the angels were there? You're looking for, for the dead. He's not dead. He's risen. Go and tell. Well, Jesus is just telling them to do the same thing. Go and tell. You see, there's a lesson for us right here. If we do the will of God, we will be given confirmation that we are on the right road. And that's what he's doing. He's confirming to them you're doing the exact thing you should be doing. There's the priority. The word go. Go. That expresses urgency. That expresses priority. That means to these women, don't sit around and think about it. Go. Don't sit around and just talk about it. Go. It means women, get busy, do it, and do it.